everybody. What's going on? Whew, what a day already. It's only noon and it, it feels like, I don't even know what time it feels like. It feels like four o'clock in the afternoon is what it feels like. How's everybody doing? I'm going to give everybody some time to uh, come in because I don't know uh, what the YouTubes is up to when um, you schedule a live for one time and then you change it. I don't know if it gives you um, a notification. So I'm going to let people, you know, give people a little bit of time to come on in. And I hope everybody is having a good Christmas break from school, from work. I don't know if people are having to work today or what the deal is. So, <clears throat> but uh, what I wanted to, to do today is I have a, like a little video that has um, obviously screenshots about where I got the information that I got. and. Um, Hey, Molson man. Um, so I'm going to play that. Hopefully it works. If it doesn't, it's fine. I can still talk about it, but I will. Um, I already forgot my train of thought. If it doesn't play, it doesn't play. I can still talk about it and I'll just direct you guys to Callahan's um, where all the documents are located. So let me say hi to everybody. Hello, Shamita. Hello, Team Psych Ward. Hello, Sam. Hello, Molson man. Um, so like the thumbnail says, we're going to talk about the candle wax. And we're going to talk about some things that I found on my quest to find and understand the situation with the candle wax. Um, because while I was looking for the candle wax, which you would think would be like super easy and just, you know, you just have to search and you'd be able to know. Um, it's sort of uh, obscure and yada, yada, yada. But anyway, um, I uh, I found some stuff along the way looking for the candle wax because uh, one of the uh, sources cited is the uh, criminal criminalist Lisa... I think I, I never say her name right. I'm hoping I'll get it right. It's um, sac. It's either sacvious or sacvious or sacvious, but it, her. I'll just call her Lisa. So she she uh, worked at the Arkansas State Crime Lab. She um, analyzed the fibers and hair in this case, and so she testified at um, both trials. Uh, but, but the, Hey, cement shoes. I know, babe, it's listen, the YouTube's a summy, sometimey, and I just can't deal with their shenanigans. So what I do, um, is at least once a month I unsubscribe and then I immediately resubscribe. I don't even think that's a word. And then I make sure that I hit the, um, bell that says all notifications and that, usually fixes it for a while, not forever. So anyways, um, Lisa testified, the, the testimony that I was looking at is the testimony from the uh, Eccles Baldwin trial, okay? And it is really more specifically the redirect. So, so the state has already had her testify. Both uh, defense attorneys have uh or both sides for the defense, uh, have qu questioned her and then Fogelman is on redirect. So I was looking over that testimony and what I was curious about is there's a specific part that's cited as proof of this candle wax situation, right? So I'm reading her testimony and the redirect is very brief and that's all that it talks about is this candle wax. Um, but then, so then I said, okay, well, that's not helpful because I wanted to know what she testified to before that, you know, so that I could understand the context of this testimony. So when I was doing that, 
um, I was reading her, her testimony because her testimony is not available. Um, her, the audio isn't available. So I would, wanted to clip it for you guys and let you hear it, but it's not available. So I'm reading, 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 reading. And one of the things that I stumbled on, which I found very interesting and either didn't know or forgot about, it's very difficult to tell with my brain because it sounded familiar when I was reading it or looked familiar, I guess. Um, but at the same time, it didn't. Does that make sense? So I know Cement Shoes, isn't that sad? Hey, Shmita, do you want to uh, come up and highlight questions or are you busy, babe? It's up to you. No pressure. I'll, I'll put the link in. Um, I'll just put it in here or like for afterwards. If anybody wants to come up and, and chit chat or ask questions or whatever, I'll just do it now. Um, so while I was reading her testimony, I discovered something quite interesting. One of the things that I discovered is so she's she's testifying about uh, primary tra fiber transfer, secondary transfer, et cetera, et cetera. She's going through basically um, how she analyzes fibers and the procedure. So <clears throat> she's being asked a uh, a series of questions by uh, Fogelman. All right, which I found to be interesting. So I'm going to read it to you. Hold on a second. Let me find out where I wrote that down. All right. So this is what, this is how it goes. So Fogelman says, all right, now you did come to West Memphis at the request of the police department to get some fibers, uh, known fibers for comparison from the victim's homes. Right. Lisa, that's correct. Fogelman. And you got those from the Moore's house and the buyer's house. Is that right? Lisa, that's correct. Fogelman, and why didn't you get any from the branches house? Lisa, I don't believe their residence was intact anymore. Wasn't in town or I'm not quite sure. So this is interesting because <clears throat> there's um, like... First of all, you you would you would want to have compare known samples to compare, right? That seems fairly straightforward. But it's also interesting, and I believe it was Jason's attorney that brought this up, Ford Paul Ford, when he's uh, on on cross examination, because he wants to he's trying to understand this. The truth is, there are actually Steve actually had two residents. Okay, he lived full time primarily with his mother and his younger sister, Amanda, and his stepfather, Terry Hobbs. And that was the Hobbs residence. But he also visited frequently his biological father, Steve Branch Sr.'s home as well. And yet Lisa testifies on cross-examination that she didn't visit either one of those homes and get samples which I, you know, of course I find very, I find fascinating because there was a lot of weight given to this fiber evidence and the results of these, of the fiber evidence, right? During the trials, both trials and under, you know, how can, I'm curious if she had been able to visit the Hobbs home and to visit the branch home I'm interesting. I'm interested in what those results would have been in 1993. Of course, we'll never know that because, well, obviously. So um, I want to have you guys take a look. Let me make it where I'm not on the screen. Hopefully I click the right thing. Let me see what it looks like for you. No. Hmm. All right. Hold on. Let me let me let me fix this right quick. I know what to do. I'll just add, add an overlay real quick because I want you guys to see this picture. This is an important picture. It's got to give it a second to, um, to, to upload. Okay. So can everybody see this picture? I know it takes a second for it to catch up. Okay. So you'll notice this is obviously a Polaroid. Okay. 
and it is of Dominatier's room. All right. And this happened. This, there's the date, 6393. All right. Um, this was during uh, a search warrant that was served uh, because obviously Damien stayed with Dominique. They went back and forth between each other's homes, yada, yada, yada. So, you know, obviously there's going to be photographs taken, and crime scene investigators, all of that good stuff. Well, <clears throat> what I want you to focus on is this blue candle right here. And let me see if I can. I don't think there's a way for me to make this bigger. Hold on a second. Let me let me hide this real quick and remember how I did this. How I made it um, for the background. Let me look. Anyway, um. So here's the deal with the candle wax. During the redirect testimony of Lisa, the crime, the fiber, the fiber lady. All right. Um, and I'm not diminishing her, her accomplishments. She, uh, you know, it, she earned her position. She studied a lot. She's, you know, she had a lot of training. She, she was very good at what she did. Um, hey, true psych ward. All right. Safe travels. Okay. So I'm not taking away from her accomplishments or diminishing it. I just don't want to butcher her last name and I never have been able to say it right. So she's testifying on redirect about the candle wax. Okay. And what she says basically is that there was blue candle wax found on a book in Damien's bedroom and there was a there was blue candle wax on the shirt that belonged to Steve Branch okay however they weren't then there's this blue candle let me put this picture back then there's this blue candle in um Dominique Tier's room. Okay. Right here in the corner here. Now, my I um with the video, I cropped and enlarged the candle. So the the supposition from people who believe that the West Memphis three are guilty is that it's very possible that all three of this blue candle wax that was found are from the same candle. Okay. That's the argument. Um, however, that's not what she testified to. She just testified that there was candle wax found on a book and that there was candle wax found on the shirt. And then it went to um, like a bench conference because she was, going to be testifying about um, things that she saw in Jason Baldwin's home, specifically his artwork, while she was conducting her uh, collection of evidence, okay? And they the, the judge ended up ruling that, so the argument was that she saw the candle, she saw the candle wax on the book, and then she was going to testify also about the artwork in Jason's uh, Baldwin's bedroom and that over time it went, you know, from, I don't like to use this term, but it's the only term I can think of, like normal, right, relatively normal drawings and paintings, etc., to more dark. And the um, argument made by Jason's defense attorney was basically, how would she know she can't really testify to that. And, and Fogelman's, I just wanted her to testify, you know, to what she saw. And then Judge Burnett said, let's leave it out. So then it got le left out. And then Lisa was, you know, done with, with her testimony. Okay. So that is the story about the candle wax. The truth of the matter is that nobody knows for sure if it's the same. Nobody really knows for sure if it was indeed candle wax. It appeared to be candle wax. And that's what she testified to. So we don't know for sure. 
And um, I looked through every single crime scene photo, not the autopsy photos and not photos of the bodies, right? But just the, the pictures that were taken of the crime scene, all right? There is, I could see no wax. I couldn't see, a can, you know, so I don't know how they're connected. I don't think they are connected if, in fact, that it's candle wax to begin with. The other thing that I noticed is the description of the shirt, okay? So the description of the shirt is a white polka dot t-shirt, all right? Which I found to be interesting that it's described so specifically because <clears throat> when you look at the missing persons report for Steve Branch, it's only white, a white t-shirt. So I just thought that that is one of, that's just one of those things in this case that continues to be a head scratcher. What exactly were the kids wearing? Because some of the stuff, I don't know, just the way that the clothing, except for Michael's, obviously Michael, Michael Moore was wearing a very distinct outfit, a, a Cub Scout shirt, hat, and, um, you know, jeans. That's very distinct. All right. But I just have always been curious because, um, and, and I'm willing to say also that it's, it's possible that if you think about it with respect to Christopher Byers, um, it was probably, you know, a, a busy, typical morning before school. Right. And maybe Melissa and, and Mark only caught a glimpse of what Chris was wearing. And we, and, um, we know that it it's entirely possible that what he was wearing at school isn't what he was wearing after school because he did come home at some point. So it is what it is. I just always found it one of those things that's just like, huh, okay. All right. So then I'm still looking for all of the things and which made me ha read all of the <clears throat> submission uh, evidence submission lists. Okay. And those are quite interesting as well. Uh, not so much for what's there, but some of what's not there. But then after I was doing that, hang on just a second, I need a drink. All right. But then after that, then I started um, just going through the whole crime lab, all the crime lab reports. Right. So as I'm doing that, I stumble on what's referred to as um, phys uh, physical evidence evaluation, okay? And that is an interesting list as well. So let me go ahead and uh, take this picture down. Oops. Hold on a sec. All right. And add this to the stream. Let's hope it works. And let me know if you guys... Uh, have trouble seeing it. All right, hold on. Okay. So the first thing that we're looking at here is a report from the lab. Okay. But what I want you to pay specific and, per and particular attention to is the names. So All of the suspects, right, are listed here. And then the victim would be Michael Moore. So basically what's taking place is there are items that were submitted for testing that came from these suspects. And they're going to be compared with evidence from either Michael Moore's clothing, his hat, or his body. Okay. So here we have the suspects, which make sense. Damien's name is listed twice, obviously because he goes by Damien Wayne Eccles and also his other government name is Michael Wayne Eccles, Kenneth Cagle, uh, Richard Cummings Jr., Steve Menard, John Byers, uh, Todd Moore, and Christopher Morgan. Okay. These are the, these are the people who submitted samples in the, in the investigation. Um, 
And I think that this report is June, but we'll just keep playing it. <clears throat> all right. So these are all the items that were uh, submitted from the various suspects. Okay. But here, this is what I want you to pay attention to right here. The ligature shoestring, okay? This came from Michael Moore. This is his shoelace. This is what was, um, this is what he was, you know, tied with, okay? So we'll keep going. See, because you know that because it says the medical examiner. All right, here are all of the samples that were submitted. All right. These, this is where they came from. Yada, yada, yada. Okay. So here we go. The clothing. All right. So now we're to the results part. Okay. All right. So as you can see, it reads that human blood was identified on Q52, blood too limited in quality, quantity. For further characterization was identified on Q44. Blood not further characterized was identified on Q1 and Q3. No blood was found on any other questioned items. Tissue was recovered from Q37 and Q39. This is important. No semen was found on any of the items. The samples have been retained. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, let me get back to my handy dandy notebook here and I will tell you what those items were. Uh, let me see. See, I have notes everywhere. It's too much for Jen. All right, here we go. Okay. All right. So Q52 is a shirt that was submitted. Um, from Steve Menard. So uh, Steve Menard is somebody that came up uh, early on in the investigation. There was a tip called in basically that, um, you know, he, he was a weirdo and that he, um, he lived in Mayfair and that he couldn't remember. Um, oh, no, wait, let me, um, let me back that up. All right. There was a tip called in by Tommy Nelson, quote, made a statement about doing things to kids last time in the ER for 2293. Okay. So he's interviewed May 21st, 1993. He doesn't believe he killed the boys. Doesn't remember where he was on, on May 5th. He gave blood and hair samples, and then he gave consent for them to go search his house, which is where they found the shirt. Okay. So there you go. And I think the blood on his shirt ended up being his own blood. Okay. Now, the other uh, samples are, so Q1 and Q3 are oral swabs and smear sl uh, slides and nasal swabs and smear slides. Okay. Um, they did send the blood sample from Steve Menard that he gave um, to the to genetic designs. Okay. They are the ones that did the serology report. Okay. So that's what those things mean. The not it's um a knife is E58 where they found blood. Okay. But now I can't remember and I don't for whatever reason didn't write it down. So that'll be another follow up for Jen. Okay, that I have to do. Um, it says samples have been retained. So what that means is that this, they, they had the samples. Now, we're keeping in mind that this was done in 1993. Okay, Allie, to answer your question, babe, they were saved. Okay, so we're going to keep going. And these are, this is signed by Kermit Channel. Okay, he's the... Uh, well, now I think he's the supervisor. Okay. Now, this next item here, <laughs> it's okay. It's really hard to read. Um, but so this next item that I'm showing you guys right now is a list that's under the 
physical, well, how was it, how was it written? Physical examinations. Okay. So as you, you can see, there's an envelope containing hair from Melissa Byers. There's an envelope containing hair from Steve Branch. There's um, an envelope containing hair from Sherry Branch, from hair can, uh, from Don Moore. But what do we have here? One envelope containing head hair from Terry Hobbs. One envelope containing head hair from Ryan Clark, Amanda Hobbs, Pamela um, Hobbs, uh, Dana Moore is the last one on this page. We're going to keep going because I had to take a double take on this one. Let me see if I can. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me make it go back. Give me just a sec. Um, let me pause it right here. Oh, I, you can, hold on. Let me see if I can make it bigger for me. All right. Cause what I'm trying to see is when this was sent to the prosecutor's office, just to prove, just to show proof for you guys, but you guys can all go look at this. This was the, this list was comprised over the, you know, after the arrests, et cetera, right? So my question is, I mean, let's keep going. Then I'll, then I'll ask the questions. All right. This is the list. That was the attachment. This is also part of it too. This is in this, on December 10th, 1993, this examiner, which would be, um, it'll say his name in a minute. Anyway, um, received via UPS from criminalist Lisa the following items. And here again is an, is an envelope with Terry Hobbs' hair. Okay. Now, what I just showed you before this list, the things that were compared, right? The suspects. So this is my question and my issue, and I don't have an answer for this. First and foremost, in order for Lisa to have gotten this specific hair, we'll just, we're just going to deal with, with Terry Hobbs, okay? The sample, which would... Let me think how to put this because I get this is like blah, blah, blah for me. All right. So the procedure in this case went as follows. A person would come to the West Memphis Police Department. OK, they would sign a release and permission for blood, head hair, pubic hair, et cetera, et cetera samples to be taken. OK, then. One of the officers would collect the samples, or if it was a blood sample, they would um, have their blood drawn, okay? <clears throat> and then that that specific officer or officers, because sometimes the person that collected the hair is different than the person that took the person to get the blood, okay? But everybody signs it, all right? And then what happens after that is when all the samples are collected, they are then sent to the crime lab, all right? When they're sent to the crime lab, they're not just sent willy-nilly. OK, they are sent with a list. OK, and on and the list will read this, what the sample is, who the sample belongs to and which officer. Collected the sample. OK, so you can go to Callahan's. All right. And. Click under the crime lab. All right. And you can see that there are several links to pictures of items submitted for testing, okay? If you'd go there and you click the pictures, okay, some of the links are broken, so you'll have to do the, um, the substitution, my site for 8K. And if you do that, you can also do a little handy dandy thing called control F. And you type into the search bar, 
Terry Hobbs. Okay. Which I read through and then I did the search. Okay. Cause I also just wanted to read for my own knowledge, but if, but you guys, if you're going to be looking it up, you're going to want to be looking for potentially this specific thing. So you can do that. I cannot find, and let me preface this just because I can't find it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Okay. It just means that it's not on Callahan's and it's possible that something got photographed and not uploaded that's in, or copied i should say and not uploaded that's entirely possible just that let me preface that if i say that first so bottom line is i cannot find um i cannot find a list with terry hobbs name on it with the hair okay now, <clears throat> I know cement shoes. I'm thinking about turning it on subscriber mode only, but I don't, I, don't I, I forgot about that. I'll do that tonight when I do my other live, I promise. Okay, I can't find an item submission list with Terry Hobbs and his hair, okay? That's problem number one. Problem number two is when all of the things that were submitted, okay, are compared. And there's three different reports from Lisa. There is a, re there's multiple reports from Lisa, but there are three specific reports from Lisa. One is listed for Steve Branch. One is listed for Michael Moore. And one is listed for Chris Byers. And on all three of them, all three of these reports, the suspect names with the samples compared are the same. The person missing from all three of the reports is Terry Hobbs. Now here's the question, okay? If the analyst had these samples, why were his samples not included for comparison? Because had they been included for comparison, then they would have gotten the same result in 1993 that they got in 2007, which is that the hair, it would have been a little different because it was a different kind of test in 93 versus 2007. But bottom line is in 1993, the hair found inside of the knot to bind Michael Moore would have been microscopically similar to that of Terry Hobbs. That's what the report would have read had it been compared. they had. It appears from this list anyway that they had the hair, but why wasn't it compared? And <laughs> that's where I'm at with that. The answer is, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. But as you can see, all of the other people are listed. And if you, if you, go back to Callahan's and you read Lisa's reports regarding Steve Branch and Chris Byers, you will see that the suspect lists, all three of them match. Okay. So that's that part. I just wanted to show you guys all of these. All right. Okay. Now, Point number two. So, excuse me. <clears throat> so, you know that um, there's been a lot of, I don't know how to put this. There are people who believe that the West Memphis are guilty as is their right. One of the things that they cite, okay, is Buddy Lucas and more specifically, the tennis shoes, okay? They also cite um, <laughs> they also cite, um, that the boots in Jason Baldwin's house were muddy and that Damien was covered in mud walking, you know, Narlene's whole, uh, testimony that, that he was, that Damien and, and Domini were covered in mud. They were walking on the service road, yada, yada, yada. Okay. Well, there was a test done. 
All right. And here's the date. Here's who took it, which is December, December 17th, 1993. It was received from Detective Rich. And these are what were, what were submitted for comparison. All right. Five paper bags containing plastic containers, each containing soil and labeled A, from within the creek bed, B, West Bank, C, East Bank, D, Trail, K1, Boots. All right. One pair of green boots, E110, identified as recovered from the residence of Jason Baldwin. All right. Now, let's continue. This isn't going to be a super duper long live, guys, unless you guys want to chat. Now, here we go. Examination, these are the results of the soil from the boots, revealed it to be similar in color to the known sample identified as from the West Bank. Item 3E-165. The mineral composition showed both similarities as well as some dissimilarities when compared to this known sample. As a result of these comparisons, it is the examiner's opinion that the soil on the boots did not originate from the exact location as the known soil sample from the West Bank. The possibility does exist that the soil may have originated from the same vicinity as the known sample, or it may have originated from a different location. The soil from the boots was found to be dissimilar to all of the other known samples, and in this opinion, did not originate from any of those locations. All right, so there's that. I think I have more. I know I have more, but I can't remember what it is. Okay. So there you go. There's also another report and I know I, I saved it, but I, um, I guess I didn't upload it. My bad. It's the same. Um, it's part of that same report this time. Um, it is the two shoes from the two different pairs of shoes from Jesse Miss Kelly. The first pair being the uh, white high top Adidas, and the second pair being the black and white Converse. Same results, okay. And also, they it was compared to the shoe impression left in the mud, and the and the examiner, in his opinion, these are all available on Callahan's, and maybe I'll I'll do another live at some point. Obviously, I will do another live and I'll show you those results too. Okay, so um, this is what the examiner had to say about that. The soil sample situation was pretty much the same. Almost, I think that the diff it, it was different um, comparisons that were similar and dissimilar. Okay, and what the examiner also said was that, yes, the imprint in the mud was from a tennis shoe appeared to be from that of a tennis shoe. Okay. But it was not those tennis shoes. Okay. And I, I'm sure there's one for Damien too, but I'll find, I'll find all of these and, and get them for you guys. But these are just some of the things that I wanted to, um, you know, go over with you guys. Okay. And let me highlight Miss Allie's question because this is an important question. You know, Allie, <sighs> I think that there are times, as there are with every human being, where you're alone with yourself and you're alone with your thoughts. And I would like to believe that these detectives have a moment where they, they do question things. Whatever happens publicly, you know, it's different when you're at, when you're alone with yourself. And I would hope I would I would like to think that there are times when they when they themselves um, question things 
privately. I doubt that they would ever come forward um, publicly because, you know, there is a, uh, what is it, the thin blue line for officers. They stick together. It's a brotherhood. And although that is <clears throat> intended to be a positive thing, there are situations um, where it can be a negative thing. So, you know, I would like to believe that that's, uh, that they do think that, that they wonder and that they take pause when they feel bad. Okay. Now, <clears throat> this next thing I want to show you is a letter that Inspector Gary Getchell wrote to Kermit Channel, um, who ran the, who still does, runs the um, Arkansas State Crime Lab. Okay. And I want you to understand, um, make sure that it didn't, that if this is the very beginning, here it is. Okay. I want you to look at the date. This is, the date is May 26th, 1993. Let's do a little math. Okay. So May 26th, 1993 would be 21 days, right? After the boys' bodies were recovered. Well, let me, let me say this. It'd be 20 days. Technically, they went missing on the, well, they did not technically. They went missing on the 5th. Their bodies were found on the 6th. So it's 20 days, okay, since their bodies were found. All right. So let's 27th, 28, 29, 30, 30 days, half September, April, June, and okay, there's 31. There's five. That's 31. First, second, third. And seven days, one week between the day that uh, Jesse Miss Kelly is brought to the West Memphis Police Department and then gives initially as a witness statement and then it becomes an accomplice statement. And then we know what happens after that. Okay. It leads to the arrest of Damien and, 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 Jason, but I want you to um, pay special attention to the questions that he's asking one week out. Dear Kermit, let me make this bigger for my old eyes. All right. I have a list of questions, which is vital to our investigation. I understand Dr. Peretti will be out of the office for possibly another week, and we still have many questions left unanswered. Question one, time of death. Two, cause of death. Dr. Peretti stated he would send me his report over a week ago. I still have yet to see it. Pictures of the clothing of the boys and the other set of clothing found away from the crime scene. We took some pictures, however, we did not disturb, disturb clothing, so not to lose any possible forensic evidence, which the lab hold on, could possibly find. All right. Continuing. Which clothing belong to which boy? If the lab can lay out the clothing and take photos, we could get parents to identify ID, the clothing. We feel this is important due to two sets of clothing were turned inside out and one set taken off in a more proper manner. Can it, excuse me, can it be determined from the clothing if the boys were wearing their clothes when they were initially taken, is there any tears or blood or punctures found in the clothing of the boys? Um, were the kids, um, you, you guys can read that. If so, what are the findings, any tears, bruising, etc.? Okay. All right. Hey, our Cantale or Cantale. I don't know how to pronounce that. All right. Any blood on clothing of kids? Whose blood? 
Can you provide wound, a wound diagram and explain injuries the boys received? Was the stick we sent used as a weapon on the children? The stick appeared to have been carved on or possibly done by an animal. Can the lab address this? One boy had bruising, which appeared to be where struck with something, possibly the stick on his leg. Dr. Peretti mentioned finding urine in the stomach of two boys and requested from us water samples. What can be determined in regards to the urine? Can the urine, if that's what it is, be used to eliminate? Hold on, it's harder to read. Eliminate any suspects or develop any. And this is the last page. All right. <clears throat> um, were the boys forced to perform O-A-R-A-L-S-E-X, that's for you, YouTube, on offend offender or offenders? Please explain findings. Lisa-Trace has been very helpful. Could I get a description of fiber sound, color, and what area should we should work, oh, we look for similar fibers? Which boys have similar fibers on them and description of them? Lisa has given me some information on this. Any residue found under nails of boys? Is there anything which would indicate a black male involvement? Reference to injuries of kids, defensive wounds, how severe were the kids dragged? Can you tell us which kid was killed first? All right. This is the most, this last page is his closing and in my opinion, very telling about the state of the investigation. Hi, Luna. How are you? I did pronounce it right. Yes. Okay, good. I don't like to mispronounce people's names. Okay. So here's the last page. Anything you can give or anything you can think to give us would be greatly appreciated. We need information from the crime lab desperately. Today is the third week the boys were missed by parents. Tomorrow, 527.93, will be the actual third week. We feel like we have gotten, we have not gotten sufficient information from the crime lab. We realize you have other cases coming in and must go to court on other matters. However, this case has received national recognition. And without the crime lab's information, our hands are tied. The efforts of everyone at the crime lab is greatly appreciated. The officers investigating this matter and myself need this information. We feel as though we are walking blindfolded through this case at this moment. Please answer the above questions as soon as possible and fax it to my attention at the following number. Thanks, Gary. The W. Gitchell, Specter, West Memphis 3 Police Department. Let's let that sit with us for a while. Who dat? Hey, Shamita. Well, to be fair, Luna, they would mention a black male for two reasons. One, the Bone Jangles man. Okay. And two, there was a hair of African American uh, descent found on one of the boys. I have to go back and look to remember exactly which one it was. But um, what's interesting about all of this and this letter is the letter is, is essentially Gitchell pleading with the crime lab. It is the 26th of May, and he doesn't even know the cause of death, the 
order in which the boys were killed. None of that. And I did not find uh, a response from Mr. Channel answering these questions. Now, that doesn't mean there wasn't one given. Okay. Uh, it could have taken place over the phone. However, he specifically asks for a fax. So obviously, um, he wants it written down so that he can understand, right? Now, then you have to move forward, okay, in time to June 3rd, which is when they go pick up Jesse Lloyd Miss Kelly Jr., okay? They bring him back to the West Memphis Police Department for the interrogation and the polygraph and all of the things, okay? Now, on June 4th, which is the following day, because they arrested uh, Damien and Jason the, like at the wee hours of June 4th, 1993, all right? But the following morning, like around nine o'clock, um, Jason's mom and his, and his stepdad are talking to Detective Brian Rich, <clears throat> who says to them, basically, We've got a story that's so close to perfect, we have to believe it. But Detective Ridge, if you, what changed in a week? Did you suddenly get all of the answers that you were wanting in the week? No, because I can look and see when the, when the crime lab reports were generated. And they were generated mm, June 1st and after. Okay, and some of them do, don't match the West Memphis Three even back then in June. And these questions, when were they answered? He hasn't, it sounds to me from the, the tone of this letter, I mean, not even the tone, just what's actually written in this letter, that Gitchell had, didn't even, hadn't even been told the order in which they died potentially or any of these questions. And I, to this day, I don't understand the urine and the stomachs. This is a this issue arose very early in the investigation, okay? And Peretti has denied m numerous times that th that he ever said anything like this to Inspector Gary Getchell. But let's say he did for argument's sake and is now going back and denying it because what how would you it's not listed in the autopsies as far as the content, right, of the stomachs. So it does make you wonder because there is a point where they go out to uh, Damien Eccles' trailer and they're speaking to him. And I think that this comes from the uh, either the May 7th conversation or the May 12th conversation with Damien both the 12th, the one on the 12th started out, I think at his trailer and then, and, cause that's when all three of them were together um, or 11th anyway. And then he subsequently goes back to the West Memphis police department, but there is, there are notes that were written that Damien said he heard that the boys, um, that the boys had somebody had urinated in their mouths. Okay. Well, it, it does make you wonder. To be fair, that that's it wasn't ever near and wasn't found. So where that rumor started from and who repeated it and how it got back to Damien, um, I don't understand. It can't I mean, I suppose if you really wanted to reach, you could you could say that he knew something that occurred at the crime scene that nobody else knew. But the fact of the matter is, let's see, let's say he did. That didn't happen. So he didn't. Does that make sense? Um, but this is one of those things where um, it's interesting to me that, that Dr. Peretti has denied ever saying this to doc, to, uh, to Gary Gitchell. So I, I don't know where this rumor came from, but th let me say this. Um, there, uh, they did the West Memphis Police Department did take urine samples and they did send uh, urine samples to um, 
to the crime lab and they were returned without analysis because they weren't required. You don't. Um, yeah. So there's that's that. That's that. All right. Now. Let's move forward. To what I really wanted to show. This is for you, Cement Shoes. This I did this for you. All right. Now, this is a picture of Dominie Tears' bedroom trailer, bedroom inside of her mother's trailer. I um hold on a second. Let me let me let me hit let me hit up Callahan's real quick because I know I wrote this down somewhere, but now I don't remember where I wrote it down. And I used to know this like the back of my hand as far as when this picture was taken. Here we go. Just give me just a second. Please be thinking of some questions for, for Miss Miss Shemita to, to put up on the on the uh, um thing. All right, let me see. I don't think it's dated. It just says photo of, of Domini's room in 1993. All right. So I don't know when this was taken, um, but this is, this is that photo. All right. Okay. This is the candle, obviously. All right. This picture was taken June 3rd. 1993. Yeah. Yeah. Cement shoes, that room. Um, I have been told, not just me personally, it has been, I shouldn't say it like that. It's been said that um, the trailer that Dominie lived in with her mother was filthy. It wasn't just her room and that you could smell cat urine um, as you approach the steps to uh, the trailer door. All right. So there's the candle. And this is it enlarged, obviously. It's very, I mean, it does look like it's been burned a little. It doesn't look like it's brand new, but it doesn't look like it's burned much. And the thing about candle wax is obviously when it's hot, what is it? It's liquid, right? And when you pour a candle, it doesn't pour the same way um, like water would. So you take the liquid at the bottom by the wick, right, where it's all melty, all right, and you pour it. It doesn't just pour straight. There's dribbles. And what you don't see around here are the dribbles. Yes, it is, Allie, um, blue. But you, what you don't see is dribbles. Now, it's possible that, um, first of all, it's not a very good picture, number one. I mean, it's it's a Polaroid picture. It is what it is, okay? It's the best I could do. I tried all these tricks and stuff, but I don't want to distort it, you know, like too much because, well, we know what happens to those photographs that get distorted too much, right? And, you know, then they lose credibility. So I, I got that for you, Cement Shoes, so you would know this whole origins of the candle wax. All right. I just find it interesting that the candle doesn't, it looks like it's just been burned. It doesn't look like it's ever been poured, et cetera. So I don't know how it would be spilled. And there was no candle wax found at the crime scene. I read through the crime scene notes. I read through the, I looked at the diagrams. I looked at the pictures. And let me just say this. There are pictures from the crime scene that I, I had to do double and triple takes at because I couldn't tell what the F I was looking at. Okay. Like it seems like they just took pictures of random, like actual sticks, twigs, like random leaves. There's like a, a aluminum cans out there, which makes sense, obviously, but there are some pictures that they took. And I'm just like, what was the necessity of these? And not all of the pictures that they took have, um, um, descriptions on them. Okay. Then the other thing that I did because I wanted to see and I wanted to show you guys, all right, because the, the book that had the candle wax on it. Thank you, Sam. Let's put Sam's comment up here. So, so therefore, um, 
if you are Wiccan or practice the Wiccan religion or even just dabble in the re Wiccan religion, let's cover all the things, right? You wouldn't be using a blue candle in the course of a murder, would you? I mean, I suppose you could, but they're... Um, Okay, let me answer this. All right, well, let me let me start. Let me let me let me just finish what I was saying first before I go back. Okay, before I move forward. Sorry. All right. Um, so what I so what I wanted to show you guys is because the, uh, the book with the wax on it is listed in the inventory from the items taken from Damien Eccles' home. Okay, and the items that were taken from Damien Eccles' homes were photographed. And there are two photographs from the list that are missing. Now I'll let you guess uh, which what, what one what what one of the photographs that's missing is a photograph of the book. It's missing. So I don't to answer your question. I don't know where he would have been able to get that because <clears throat> that candle that's on Dominique's um, table or whatever wasn't listed in the items taken from the search of her home. And there aren't other candles because I searched the term candle and I searched the term candle wax. And so I don't know how that uh, is a statement that could be made because how would you be able to determine if they are the same, if they were never compared? So, um, I don't understand. I don't know where he got that because even on, um, the website that that lists this particular situation or this this candle wax issue right even they concede that it isn't an exact match it wasn't compared and that it's just a compelling and interesting fact or coincidence i think is how they put it but bottom line is if the nons can concede that this is interesting or, or an interesting coincidence, then, then you know that there, if, believe me, if it was an exact match, they would have that in typed in bold letters and underlined. It would be huge. They would definitely cite it. And I'm 98% sure I know who's behind that website. I'm obviously not going to name the name, but the person who I suspect is behind that website has uh, been on this case longer than even I have. Um, and I'm familiar with the way that they discuss the case and them as a, as a person I've interacted with them and they're not, they're not bad people. They're, it's not a bad person. It's just that the, this person is very adamant about certain very specific facts in this case. And if that candle wax was an exact match, I know that this person would cite it as such. And it would be a much bigger deal on that website than the, uh, than the way that it, it reads currently. And that's what I'll say about that. <clears throat> That's, yeah, so when you asked me about that cement shoes the other couple of months, weeks ago, my goodness, who knows? I've taken so many dadgum breaks from this case. It's I'm annoyed with myself. I can't believe you guys come back and listen to me. I take so many breaks. But anyway, when, I, when you asked me that question, it is something that I um, I had heard about, okay? But I'd heard about it in the manner that there was candle wax hand on a shirt. And that um, there was candle wa wax on a book. I don't remember hearing about the candle in uh, Dominique Tears room, but that's, you know, and I always thought it was a big fat nothing burger because it wasn't actually analyzed. And I can't tell, I don't, I don't, I'll go look and I will double, triple check before I say this, but I don't 
think that it there are is a report that specifically states that that is what that 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 on the uh, white shirt with polka dots that it is emphatically candle wax. But I will go back to, and double and triple check. And um, I'm going to go live tomorrow night too. Um, and I will have the answer to that question for sure. Never. Okay. So the website that I um, went and looked at has it listed as never on a broomstick as the title of the book. Um, but without that picture and I, I will, let me write that down to Sam so I can remember to um, go back. Let me, let me go back through stuff and find out about the shirt and wax just to make triple triple sure and then let me go back and look for the book to see if um the title is listed anywhere all right i will have those two answers um for you guys thursday night when i go live um well, I just want to make sure that I'm telling you. Oh, wait. Uh, I meant to show that. Oh, Shamita's back. Okay. Do you want me to add you to the stream, Shamita? I'm adding you. Um. Anyway, I, uh, I'll, I'm, I will remove you because I know you just want to be backstage to highlight the comments. It's fine. Anyway, um, I want to make sure that... Um, I think we are, we probably are Luna speaking of the same people. They, you know, it is what it is. There's a core group of non-supporters that have followed this case um, either as long as I have some of them longer, just like there is a core group of supporters that have followed this case as long or longer than I have. And I've been on, I have been following this case. I think I went, when I went back, and looked up, I searched my name on the old um, message board. And um, I think that my earliest post was 2001. So there you go. Um, probably. But I, I want to make sure anyway, um, Sam, that that is the exact book that it, it that the, um, that I can verify that that is the name of the book. If And if I can't, I'm very curious how the uh, owner runner of that website was able to um, cite that, which I will say to be fair to the person that runs that site there, they are very um, emphatic in their belief. And I respect it because I don't agree with it. Right. And I don't agree with their interpretation of, of some of the evidence, some of their, some of their, some of the interpretation of the evidence I do happen to agree with, but some of it I don't. And they're very, very emphatic. And I've, I don't know them to be, um, a liar. Do you know what I mean? Because so much, uh, time was spent back in the day on those discussion boards, the back and forth, the back and forth and, um, you know, copy pasting a person's post to you or a portion of it. So that then you could reply, you quote them and then you reply to the quote that took like a long time, you know, it was an effort to do that kind of stuff. So I feel like they got it from somewhere and I just don't know where it was. I will find out though, or I will try to find out where they got it from. There you go. It could have been, um, you know, it could have been it, uh, it could, I mean, it could have come from anywhere. Okay. It, it is what it is. And that's just the truth. I will try to find out though, for you guys. Um, so, well, Sam, the way that it is described is that 
that there's what there is blue candle wa wax on the cover. And again, the title was um, never on a broomstick. So that's the alleged title. I will look further into it to see if I can find anything else because no, no, Luna, not that one, not a religious site. Mm -mm, that's not the one. This is a site that is, um, has a matching Facebook page and I'll just leave it at that because I'm not going to promote other people. You know, if you guys want to find it, you'll find it. But, um, and I encourage you to find it, but, um, I'm not gonna, I don't want to, I don't want to, it's not that, it, okay, let me say it like this. It's not about promoting. Mentioning the site invites the people of the site to then come over. And I have already argued and, and debated with them for years. And I'm just not interested in doing it anymore because it, we typically end up having the same debate. And I've been there, I've done that, and I've gotten the t-shirt. And now I want to move on from that part of it. And that's just the way that it is. I respect their opinion. They're entitled to it. I disagree with it. And that's that. And that's where I want to leave it. So those are the questions. If you guys don't have any more questions, I'm going to get off of here because I have to finish up a tiny bit of work left for tonight's episode of whatever happened to you. I've already um, scheduled the live for nine o'clock Eastern time. We will be uh, covering uh, the Missy Avila uh, case from 1985. I will wait for you to be right back, uh, Cement Shoes, because I'm curious where you're going and what you have to say when you get back. So that I'm doing tonight, and I have a little bit more uh, work to do to put it together. And uh, I decided that, wow, uh, rather than, so let me just say this. Um, I will be changing um, the... Uh, chat tonight to um subscribers only because that's the only way to get rid of the bots and i don't even know why they're in here i never used to get them before i don't know what the deal is anyways i digress let me let me complete a whole thought um I decided tonight rather than put together like I have in the past and some of the episodes put a whole like video together with me discussing the case and then doing it as a premiere. Um, um, which stepfather, Luna, would you like me um, to, to talk about? And you know what? I, I def, if you tell me which one you want to talk about and um, if anything that you any like specific questions that you have. And I will definitely cover that um, Thursday night when I go live. I promise. Regardless of who the stepfather is, I will cover them. I just, if there's something very, if there's something specific that you want to talk about, we can talk about that. Oh, I think that I know exactly which stepfather that, well, I'm not, no, that's not true. I, and there's two of them with some, anyway. Um, now I got all distracted again. So I'm just going to go live tonight rather than do a premiere. That was the bottom line that took me 87 years and 3,700 minutes to get to. But I'm just going to do a live tonight. I'm not going to do a premiere. Of course, I will have uh, visual exhibits to display because that is the, you know, you got to have something to look at. Um, man. Thanks, Shmita. Um, yeah, it's, listen, you guys can, you can ask me any questions. Are you asking, uh, let me just ask you this. Are you talking about um, John Mark Byers <clears throat> or are you talking about Terry Hobbs? Just specifically, and if you have like specific um, like questions and I will, how about, a, okay. All right. So Terry Hobbs, this is what I'll do. So for Thursday's episode, we'll talk about the family dynamics, okay? And we will, and I will, we will talk about John Mark Byers, and we will talk about Terry Hobbs, and uh, that's that's what we'll do. We'll that's what our uh, our uh, 
our live will be on, or our my live will be on Thursday will be about. So I'm just gonna I'm waiting just a little tiny bit longer for because uh, for cement shoes because I'm curious about what he had, what where he went and why and what he's gonna come back with. But um, I want to do it next time because oh thank you luna i thank you so much i i appreciate you guys uh being here yes thursday is tomorrow shamita what i said oh thursday i eat tomorrow maybe i just need to learn how to read better i'm not gonna say that i'm not com i'm not answering comments anymore i clearly can't read the chat bottom line is it's a it's a um complicated discussion to discuss John Mark Byers and to discuss um, Terry Hobbs. So I want to give that subject, I want to prepare myself because there's stuff that I, I want to re refresh myself on. And then I want to, um, you know, be able to give it the, um, the attention to detail and the, the length of a lie that I feel best, which, which that. Oh gosh. I, okay. I definitely will talk about all of that. Um, Luna, I promise I will put all of that. I will include all of those things and be prepared to, uh, talk about that. And if you have, um, I want to make sure I had given enough time for me to talk about what I got to talk about. And then for you guys to ask, you know, questions pertaining what I've talked about or qu other questions about the case that, you know, happen to, you happen to remember. Because sometimes I can be listening about one subject on this case and it'll trigger me to remember something else that I want to go look at. So that is, uh, thank you. I, hi, anaphylaxis. Okay. I'm going to do the live, uh, Thursday evening at nine Eastern. That seems to be everybody's favorite time is nine Eastern. So that's what I'm going with. I just wanted to do a, give you guys a nooner here for, uh, you know, for, for my, for my Irish bestie, Sam, Sam's like my fam. She is my fam. So, um, it's, you know, this is an easier time for her to be here. And thank you, Shmeda. This is an easier time for her to be here for and, and participate and ask questions, et cetera, et cetera. So I think if that's all, I'm going to end this live. And I will, I thank you to my mods. I thank you to the audience for being here and listening and asking such great questions. And uh, thank you to the StreamYard for playing the video with no hiccups. I appreciate that. And I will see you guys tonight at 9 Eastern. And we're going to talk about the uh, Michelle Missy Avila case. Okie dokie. All right. Bye, you guys. I love you too, Sam. All right.